welcome to Match of the Day and Anfield, the home of Liverpool Football Club, who tonight play Newcastle United in the third round of the FA Cup. And it's bound to be an emotional occasion. We shall endeavour to capture that atmosphere for you with our BBC team. John Motson, who will handle the match commentary. Alan Parry, close to the off-field action. Bob Wilson, with the news of tomorrow's third round ties. And alongside me, Bobby Charlton, who always seems to get to the heart of the matter. And during half-time, there's a special goal of the month competition, and the winner will be the BBC's guest at Wembley in the Cup final in May. Quite an occasion, Bob. Well, it's tremendous. I suppose, especially being a Geordie, when I was coming from the car park here, there was so much, there was so much sentimentality in it for me and nostalgia because I used to be brought up to with crowds like this, and and I don't think there is a crowd anywhere in the country that has a passion for the FA Cup like the Geordies. You used to watch Newcastle United yourself, didn't you? From my, from when I was eight year old, yeah, and uh, especially when they used to travel. I mean, even uh, the people that are not here today that haven't been lucky enough to get tickets will be thinking of, of everybody in the North East will be thinking about Newcastle, the two and who they're going to go on the day, it'll be great. You couldn't afford to travel in your day. Sorry, Jimmy. You couldn't afford to travel in your day. Well, no, but there wasn't the same services either, mate, but I couldn't afford it either, no. Well, there it is, Bob getting us tingling again, and uh, thanks for that. And now let's take a look at uh, one or two of the uh, star players, really, that we're going to see in action tonight. And we start with a leading scorer in the first division, a player, really, Newcastle bought, or rather Liverpool bought, for £300,000. He's a goal scorer at 22 and already a man apart. Action in so fast and leads the charge. Rush to his left, onside, Ian Rush, 1-0 Liverpool, brilliant goal. Ian Rush is the striker who leads his challengers because he has the one asset that turns very good players into exceptional ones, pace. That leads to Rush, and it's in at last. Unlike many quick players, while the rest of his body is racing, his brain keeps cool, which gives him a healthy ratio of success in converting so-called open goal situations. Terry McDermott was originally bought from Newcastle by Liverpool for £166,000. He became an England player and an integral part of Liverpool's success story. When he returned to the North East, his understanding with Kevin Keegan immediately began to pay dividends. McDermott, he's got Keegan in the box, this is Keegan! What a magnificent goal! Kevin Keegan has matured like good talent. He's a gifted athlete in the physical sense, packing immense power into that compact frame. Kevin's special art has been finely honed and sharpened at home and abroad, and has delighted his new fans. He scores prolifically now for Newcastle and with athletic power, proving their investment in him to be gold-plated. And Ryan got the ball in the flick, almost by Warner. Kevin Keegan! Who else? McDermott with the kick. And Keegan again! Keegan sees the fans happy. And John Motson, I wonder which fans he's going to keep happy tonight. Well, just look at that side at the Anfield Road end. The Newcastle United supporters, and the estimate of 11,000 of them seems about right, have turned that end of the stadium into their own version tonight of St James's Park. Black and white scarves and flags everywhere, just underlining the loyalty and devotion that Newcastle United supporters have given to their club in what have frankly recently been fairly lean times. But at the other end of the ground, there are supporters who know a thing or two about following a successful team. The Liverpool fans also awaiting eagerly the return here of the two former Liverpool stars, Kevin Keegan and Terry McDermott. Meantime, down below, where the fans can't see, that is the Newcastle United dressing room. They walk just a few steps down the tunnel there, underneath the famous sign. And their supporters, I'm quite certain, will be greeting them with a reception to be remembered.
Anfield over the years, the scene of so many great cup occasions. But very rarely have the Liverpool fans been in danger of being outshouted. And one of the dressing room doors has opened, and the anticipation inside the ground is rising all the time. These Newcastle people who streamed across the M62 are waiting to greet Kevin Keegan as he leads the side out. reception for Keegan from one end of the ground and a generous round of applause from the other because the cop haven't forgotten this already is developing into quite a night not just because of Kevin Keegan's return but because the supporters here also have a great affection as indeed the Newcastle fans do now for Terry McDermott and perhaps a good time now to check on the two teams Kenny Dalglish hoping to come out of hospital tomorrow, has in fact broken that cheekbone in four places. So Michael Robinson comes in at number seven, and that is the only Liverpool team change. For Newcastle United, who are unchanged, might help you to know the formation if you don't see them play very often. The back four is Anderson, Saunders, Roder and Ryan. The midfield is McDermott, McCreary and Kenny Wharton. And the two players up front with Keegan are Peter Beardsley and Chris Waddle. Quite a lot of experience in the Newcastle side, uh, Jimmy, in addition to Kevin Keegan and Terry McDermott. David McCreary there, an international player. Yes, the man who's been a sub at Wembley twice, a, a pacey player, and I think one who really is appreciated as much by his teammates, if not more, than by the fans. He's a good player to have in your side. And, but Chris Waddle is the one I'm looking forward to watching. Number nine there, a tall, willowy athlete, a lovely stride. He can take people on, and he really has a very sweet left foot if he gets within striking range of the goal. I think he scored seven goals in seven matches. Quite a player to keep an eye on tonight. And alongside him, uh, Peter Beardsley is a player that interests me too. He was once on Manchester United books and he went to Carlisle, then off to Vancouver Whitecaps in a strange kind of deal and he's now back in Geordie Land. Uh, he's a player like Gary Shaw, really, a nimble front player who's got a trick or two up his sleeve. Very slight of foot kind of player. If he's got the confidence to take people on in the area, then he'll make chances for himself and his colleagues. So the supporters who followed this famous club down the years, wondering now, can they take on Liverpool and beat them here at Anfield? It's partly down to Keegan, not forgetting the others in the team, and the reason we've talked about Newcastle players rather than Liverpool men before the kickoff is simply because apart from him and McDermott, they may not be as well known. But Liverpool you know only too well. In their familiar red, Ian Rush, number nine, the top scorer, and Michael Robinson, who played in the final for Brighton last season and knocked out Newcastle and Liverpool on the way. The referee tonight, a former cup final referee, the reliable Keith Hackett from Sheffield. And Liverpool are defending the cop end in the first half. John Anderson for Newcastle, then Nickel for Liverpool. Robinson off Anderson for the first corner. Quickly taken, Sammy Lee. Awkward header. Waddle is back there defending. Glenn Roder is there too.
Terry McDermott, who played in three European Cup finals for Liverpool, and they won them all. The target is Keegan. Alan Kennedy, a former Newcastle player, takes an injury and a challenge from Chris Waddle. Alan Kennedy, who played for Newcastle against Liverpool in the 74 final when he was 19. And Keegan scored two goals for the other team. They've swapped clubs since then. Phil Neal. Lee. Number 10, Craig Johnston. Good effort! He had a good match here against Manchester United on Monday and scored, and his confidence is high. Craig Johnston saw the goal and let fly with a right foot shot. Anderson for Newcastle. Johnston for Liverpool. Steve Nicholl. Newcastle appealed against him, but it's a free kick to Liverpool. Sunes is placing the ball, Lee is behind him. And Lee drives and forces a corner. For which Alan Hansen has come forward from the back. In for Johnson to flick it on at the near post, but a goal kick. Well, it's always difficult to wear the number seven shirt here when you think who normally wears it and who wore it some years ago. Keegan was up too early. Glenn Roda former cup final captain, little shuffle that we know so well. And he almost got them through the offside trap. Lawrenson for Liverpool, though. Fields for handball, the linesman saw it. John Ryan. Glenn Roder, who captained QPR against Spurs in 82, but missed the replay when he was suspended. Lee with the kick, short to Sunis. Here's Kennedy. Number six, Hansen. Into rush, but McCreer is there for Newcastle, and so is Waddle, who always prefers to use his left foot, even when he's on the right. As Jimmy Hill said, seven goals in seven games for Chris Waddle. Beardsley, Keegan. A long ball by Phil Neal, that's Wes Saunders covering Robinson. Seemed to be pushed there, Saunders, and a free kick given. Rush putting Rhoda under strain there at the back. He likes to play, he's an elegant footballer, Glenn Rhoda. Well, Hansen ought to be able to beat Keegan in the air. This is Waddle. Quite a pacey opening five minutes then. That was Ryan. Johnston. And Ryan again for Newcastle.
Keegan got it on the chest and also took a challenge from behind by Mark Lawrence. So Newcastle can get people forward here. But they've pushed uh, five others up with Keegan. This Anfield pitch looking in fine condition. It's quite a warm evening too for the summer of the year. McDermott. Rush challenged him and got there again. Well, will Newcastle rise to the occasion or will it perhaps overwhelm one or two of the younger players early on? There's Rush for Liverpool. And the goalkeeper Martin Thomas Scrambles the ball over the line for a corner. And Nickel with the flick, rushes in there, Robinson! <laughs> Liverpool take the lead, and Michael Robinson is the scorer. Back after injury in Kenny Dalglish's shirt, the flick on by Nickel, the jump by Rush, Robinson's right foot, 1-0 to Liverpool. Liverpool don't score many goals from corners, but tonight they're bending them into the near post in the fashionable style, and as that one dropped, Robinson made no mistake. Eight minutes gone. Waddle. Rush. Lee, Robinson. He's waiting for support. Phil Neal. Sunis. Lee behind him. Free kick given against Graham Sunis. But what a good start for his Liverpool side. Test now of Newcastle's nerve. Keegan. McDermott. Lee Sunis. Well played by Glenn Roder. Beardsley little touch. And a return to Beardsley from Kenny Wharton. Flag was up for offside, so it wouldn't have mattered. Well, he hasn't won the fans over yet entirely here at Anfield, Michael Robinson, but that goal will help. McDermott. Keegan. Foul by Mark Lawrence. Dermot, Waddle. Into Peter Beardsley. Challenge was by Steve Nicholl, but the referee was well positioned and said goal kick. Jimmy Hill. Interesting Newcastle using Waddle on the right because you can see there that he is naturally left footed and loves to cut inside and then use those little tiny wall passes. That's obviously going to be an attack in which they're going to try. Uh, to make up for that uh, rather bad start, really. A corner kick, should have defended better than that. Rush made it, and Robinson finished. Flag was up for offside there. And the players didn't hear the whistle because there's so much noise inside the ground. Been playing for ten minutes, and should anybody have just turned on, Liverpool lead 1-0. Keegan surrounded by red shirts, McDermott for Newcastle. Waddle, Anderson's made the extra man on the overlap. And Waddle, unpredictable. Yeah. 
Robinson again. Anderson. Beardsley, nice touch. Waddle. McDermott. Can he turn it inside Hansen? He can, but Lawrenson's covering. Beardsley was there. And Newcastle got a corner. Now Saunders and Anderson have gone up. Saunders number five. Played short for Waddle. Anfield has been a good ground in cup matches for Liverpool for 10 years. They've only lost once here in 69 cup ties. The only team to win in that period, Brighton and Hove Albion last season. Rush with Rhoda. Just a touch from Keegan. Kennedy forward. Johnston a good flick. Steve Nicholl playing his first cup tie tonight, first FA Cup tie, that is. Number five for Liverpool. Oh, what a good back heel by Rhoda. McDermott. And is he onside? It's Kenny Wharton and the flag stayed down. Keegan's waiting in the centre and Lawrenson came across with those long legs of his to avert the danger. Wharton beat the offside trap because Liverpool, as usual, like to push up all in a line. Good back heel there by Glenn Roder a little earlier on. If that near post corner is going to work, the coaches say the delivery has to be absolutely right. It wasn't then, but it was for Liverpool earlier when they scored. Beardsley. McDermott to Waddle. And Grobola had a good view of that. was a feeling in the Liverpool dressing room that they've been caught cold early in one or two recent matches and they were determined to put that right tonight and they have by scoring themselves in eight minutes. It was a goal which took Michael Robinson in double figures for Liverpool his tenth of the season. Newcastle fans spreading into that Kemlin Road stand as well, waving there from the seats. Terrific turnout, 11,000 from the northeast. McDermott. Neil for Liverpool. Waddle. And again. Wharton's made his run down the left, and he's beaten the offside trap for the second time, and Grobelaar plays sweeper. McCreary. Ryan. Keegan's come short. McCreary.
Been playing for a quarter of an hour here in the FA Cup third round. Liverpool 1, Newcastle 0. Anderson for Newcastle. Beardsley. McDermott's made a run through. Liverpool fans know those breaks of his through the inside right channel only too well, Jimmy. He's ploughed that furrow before, definitely. <clears throat> it's interesting, really, to look at the Liverpool side. We often talk about the accuracy of their passing and the simplicity of it. But one of the things that it's impressed me tonight is the way in which they've tackled. Every man has competed, almost as if they say, we're not going to let Kenny Dalglish's absence affect us. And they really have been a copybook lesson in competing for that ball and tackling and winning tackles. Here's Sunis. Robinson back to Sunis. Now Rush, is he onside? Robinson appears to be. They look for a flag. Never came. Johnston, Sunis, Johnston, stretching there with Saunders, Hansen's header, McDermott, Waddle, well he is hugging this right hand side as Jimmy Hill said, Chris Waddle, but he tends to spread to either flank and may well Pop up on the left later in the game, I would think. Well, they keep hoping Keegan's going to win them in the air. That's McDermott. And it's the Newcastle fans you can hear, despite the fact their side are a goal down. McCreary. Anderson, McDermott, nice play, Waddle, Keegan's off in the centre, Waddle goes inside too, shot struck Lawrenson, that was promising. McDermott, easy for the keeper, and the throw to Sammy Lee, who can't reach it. Wharton for Newcastle. And the Geordies having a generous share of the play for the moment, but that's when Liverpool can be so ominously dangerous when they catch you coming out like this. Michael Robinson, Johnston. Although in Dalglish's absence, there may be a reduction in the amount of cunning and imagination around that penalty area. Saunders. Newcastle haven't allowed the goal to unsettle and they've come back strongly. Keegan left on the floor by Hansen. Waddle picks up the loose ball. Keegan again. McDermott. And they're still tangling on the floor. Uh, Keegan and Nickel. No malice. Beardsley. Good effort. And there was that little cunning turn of Beardsley that I was talking about. Number eight there. A lovely little wriggle he does when eventually he gets possession and a pretty fierce shot. I think Grobola had it covered. Goalkeepers Union would <laughs> rather rightly claim there that that wouldn't have gone in anyway. It came after 20 minutes. The score is 1-0 to Liverpool. For any latecomers, Michael Robinson, the scorer, in eight minutes. Following a corner. Here's Johnston. Nickel to Kennedy. Now it's Sunis. 
tangling with McCreary. Keegan comes back to sort things out. And Johnston finding room. Nice through pass to Nickel. Oh, and he's gone alone. Johnston in support again. Steve Nickel, who's settled down on the left hand side of midfield for Liverpool this season. the chant there from the uh, Newcastle fans they were taunting Craig Johnston who used to play for a North East club Middlesbrough <laughs> Hansen for Liverpool Anderson with the header Sammy Lee is following up here with McCreary. Play on, Sunis. Well, the cop are solemn compared to the Newcastle fans, but they've seen most things before, and they're quite satisfied that their team, the side chasing four trophies, Liverpool, are leading 1-0. Newcastle's cup final in a sense for Liverpool almost a routine match when you think of how many they've been through like this Nickel oh Nickel got caught by Beard this is Johnston both players are back on their feet McCreary on the ball Wharton who often has been the furthest player forward as he comes from midfield cutting off the keeper now Kenny Wharton, who's making those runs to try and beat the offside game. But here's Alan Kennedy. Sammy Lee. Four up with him. And it's Lee's shot and well taken by Martin Thomas. From Sammy Lee. Sunas gets it back from Lee, but it was a bit tight. Offside against Robinson. Well, they sang the Bladen Racers before the start, and they'll be singing it again if Newcastle can claw their way back into this cup tie. Been playing 25 minutes as Wharton tries to come through for Newcastle and earns a free kick. for Waddle, Sunas away. Three defenders back to mark the two attackers. McCreary, Lee, Rush. Well, Liverpool will be pleased about the early goal because apart from that, there hasn't been too much invention about their attack. 
Maybe too early to say they're missing Kenny Dalglish, but certainly finishing hasn't been of the usual high order up to now. And Waddle predictably has switched wings. He's on the left now, looking for McDermott here. Try to get it back to Keegan. And the player running is Craig Johnston. He's got Robinson unmarked on the far side. The tackle was by Anderson, but the foul is given against Johnston. has actually made Newcastle 6-1 to against to win this match. So how sure they were that Liverpool were going to go through, or at least have a draw anyway. But trying to pull the game round here is McDermott. Offside against Waddle. barrage of noise from the Newcastle fans away to our left here's Walton can the team respond that's the big question but responding for Liverpool is Johnston trying to get round his man he did and rush 2-0 it's so easy Liverpool style Sammy Lee forward and Craig Johnston up against Glenn Roder, gets round the back and puts in a simple chance for Ian Rush to score his 23rd goal of the season. Johnston, the creator. Rush, as always, the finisher. 2-0 to Liverpool inside the first half hour. Waddle for Newcastle whose task now is doubly difficult. Very rarely do Liverpool lose a two-goal lead. It has happened, but not very often. And Ian Rush there might have put this cup match beyond Newcastle's reach. We shall see. McCreary. Ryan. Referees his play on and Lawrence finds Rush. Here's Lee. Quarter of an hour to go in the first half. Liverpool lead 2-0. The goal scorers, Robinson and Rush. Bad mistake by Alan Hansen. Peter Beardsley takes on Lawrenson, who beats him. Beautiful tackle. Immaculate. Lee down the line. And Johnston, who's currently enjoying his football, be delighted with the part he played in that second goal. Ryan. Saunders. Roder. 
Crowder, McDermott. Wharton's made the run again, and he tried to get it back to Keegan at first. He's now in the centre, is Keegan, but it's not coming over. A marvellous crowd and some good quality second division football may not be enough for Newcastle here because Liverpool in this mood are a mean machine. They're two up and they're coming forward again with Rush. Dermot. Oh, Robinson, a nice turn. There are players backing him up too, one of them being Johnston. Nichols in the penalty area, so is Rush. This time, Johnston's pass, nothing like as good. Now the cock can be heard, loud and clear. And it was in the uh, face of McCreary by Sunes. Looked accidental to me from here. Entirely accidental. I know sometimes Graham Sunis has a reputation, but on that occasion, both were going for the ball, and it was unfortunate. But I must say that uh, the power of the Liverpool side is what's been apparent to me tonight. Uh, Craig Johnson's run there, the reason he created that goal at the end of the day was that he had the capacity to hold off a challenge and the determination to win it come what may. I mean, the defender was in just as good position, really, to prevent that cross, but he wouldn't be beaten. They win the tussles. They're so strong man for man physically. And we can actually have a look at that tackle now. You can see coming up now, McCreary thinks he can get the ball there, and he's, he's actually taken his leg down soonest there. He was taking it away at that moment once he realised that the ball had gone. But atmosphere tremendous it was wonderful to see the Newcastle fans when they were 1-0 down John still smiling and feeling that their team could somehow pull them back into the game and they're still battling away but I somehow feel now that Liverpool once they've got command of a game like this uh, won't lose it well McCreary has recovered Newcastle have possession it's Keegan to Anderson Keegan let it go through his legs, but Lawrenson saw it coming. If you've tuned in in the last few minutes, Liverpool lead here by two goals to nil. It's Rush on the ball. Kennedy. Lee. It's well played by Beardsley. Might have been shoved a bit there by Hansen. The referee saw nothing amiss. Here's Nickel. Neil joins the attack. Robinson outright. Nickel. Lee. And here's Rush. And he got round Saunders, but Thomas blocked it well. If that had come over from Rush, Robinson would almost certainly have scored. So a corner to Liverpool to be taken by Sammy Lee. If he can get the ball through the screamers. Nickel was up, Kennedy was forward, and it was volleyed away by John Anderson. Here's Hansen, and now Neil. And Johnson's on his way again. Here's Rush. Here's Nickel. Yeah. 
Nickel. Goal scorers, if you missed one or both. Robinson after eight minutes, number seven. And the second goal is scored by Ian Rush, number nine. And he's in again. Newcastle's error, and Thomas had to save them. Defence anxious and uncertain because the pace and alertness of Rush is always a threat. Here he is again. Johnston. Lee. Still those supporters give their team tremendous backing. They don't believe the game is lost by a long way. Here's Rush. Now, can Newcastle break here with Waddle? Too long. Johnston, Rush, Johnston again. Not the pass that Nickel would have appreciated. Keegan, as often happens when Newcastle is struggling, has gone further back to try to lend a hand in a deeper position on his way forward again now. It'll be uh, Anderson to take the free kick, and there's plenty to aim at up there. And Grobelar decides to come and meet Keegan. Very calmly, too. Good kick by the Liverpool goalkeeper. Rhoda had to head it down to Souness. Johnston got in the way. So did Nickel. Rush. Wharton for Newcastle. And Keegan just can't find space. Liverpool players on their metal when he gets the ball. Which is totally understandable because this match was in danger of being built up around one man. Nickel. Interception by Saunders. Nickel again, a good ball to Rush. Oh, he hits them from anywhere. Fierce effort with the left foot. Good save too. Nickel, a good ball back, sensible play, rush, an instant shot. Thomas responding well, down by his post. There'll be a delay while Ian Liversidge, the Newcastle physiotherapist, comes on to treat John Anderson. Just a reminder of the goal times. Michael Robinson after eight minutes, and Ian Rush after 29. January night, lots of excited faces, a cup tie which has so far gone entirely Liverpool's way, they have the corner, and Johnston's up, and they force another one. Just over five minutes left in the first half. Away by Saunders, only as far as Neil. That's his volley, and it's going right across, nowhere. Newcastle peg back again here. This is McCreary. Nickel beats him, having a good match, Steve Nickel. Rushes up again. Danger here. Soonish. Deflected by Keegan. McDermott, who's not been in the match very much so far. And he hasn't helped Newcastle's cause there either. Rush to Robinson, back to Rush. Johnson is forward too. But if you give the ball away like that against Liverpool, you're asking for trouble. It's 
Lawrence's header. Here's McDermott. Peter Beardsley. Newcastle have found it so difficult to get past the individual Liverpool defenders who all seem to be on their game tonight. Tackles have been coming in decisively. Chaser of a lost cause there. Beardsley. Neal's in so quickly. How well he reads the game. Bill Neal. Brilliant. Robinson's through. Well saved by the goalkeeper as Anderson challenged Robinson. But the man who dictated the play there, Bill Neal. Kennedy, John Anderson with the header, McCreary for Newcastle, Anderson again, lofted up towards Beardsley, but those high balls Liverpool can deal with quite comfortably, Rhoda, Wharton, Soonis, the whistle had already gone for an offside, further up the field, Johnston heading on for Sammy Lee. This is Ryan. England under 21 man, John Ryan. Rhoda now coming out of defence. Wharton. And McDermott's made his run, but again the defence holds firm. There's a measured confidence about that Liverpool back four tonight. Robinson particularly seems to be in very steady form. Holy, holy. Kennedy. Anderson is in the way, but Kennedy's still there. The support in the centre, if he can get it in. Saunders clearance to Keegan. Only one player upfield for Newcastle. It's Waddle. It was a good ball from Keegan. Forcing Lawrence into hurry. So the last minute of the first half of this third round FA Cup tie at Anfield. Liverpool 2, Newcastle United 0. McDermott for Newcastle, looks for Keegan. Neil did well to reach it. Saunders. First half played in a very good spirit and well controlled by Keith Hackett. Lee to Johnston. And Robinson's there. Rush is coming in. Offside against Johnston. Well, Liverpool made a good enough opening there to have gone 3-0 up. Didn't apply the finish, but the Newcastle defence, which has been seem to be of rather less than firm substance in certain second division games this season look to be leaking again so a brisk and buoyant first half for Liverpool Michael Robinson gave them the lead after eight minutes on his return after an ankle injury in Kenny Dalglish's place and Ian Rush made it 2-0 after 29 minutes the players leaving the field with the Newcastle fans still giving them warm applause. But frankly, their team have been made to look second class up to now. And that's a compliment to Liverpool, who seem to have risen to the occasion themselves and look determined not to allow a shock result to happen. But in the cup, you never know. And when Keegan's around and McDermott, 
the second half could produce some surprises. Well, you've said it, John, in the cup, you never know. Is there a chance for Newcastle, Bob? Only if Liverpool slacken the pace a little, I feel. Uh, this set-off uh, as though they were trying to prove all the critics, Liverpool, you know, over the, some of the slackness uh, over the last few weeks. And luckily enough, they got a good goal early on. It slowed Newcastle down. Uh, but I felt a little bit sorry for Newcastle because when you, it's a familiar picture for people that watch Liverpool regularly, you know, to see them grind teams in and to, to really pressure them into making mistakes. And it, it was at a pace that unfortunately Newcastle couldn't really go with. They, didn't, they needed half an hour but to, for it to slow down and yeah. unfortunately by half an hour, you know, there were two goals down. But uh, Liverpool have, have played really well. It, but like I say, Newcastle looked reasonably good when Liverpool had a little bit of a breather after about a quarter of an hour, 20 minutes. Well, and as, lo as, long as, the, as long as Liverpool keep tight the way they do and they shouldn't be in any trouble. But if they do slacken the pace, Newcastle could still be there, yeah. Well, let's hope they will, because it will make a game of it for all of us. But for those of you who may not have seen some of the highlights of the first half, let's have a look at them now. And Nickel with the flick, rushes in there, Robinson! <laughs> Liverpool take the lead, and Michael Robinson is the scorer. Back after injury in Kenny Dalglish's shirt, the flick on by Nickel, the jump by Rush, Robinson's right foot, 1 0 to Liverpool. Liverpool don't score many goals from corners, but tonight they're bending them into the near post in the fashionable style, and as that one dropped, Robinson made no mistake. Keegan again, McDermott. And they're still tangling on the floor, uh, Keegan and Nickel. No malice, Beardsley. Good effort. An incessant barrage of noise from the Newcastle fans. Away to our left. Here's Wharton. Can the team respond? That's the big question. But responding for Liverpool is Johnston. Trying to get round his man, he did, and rush! 2-0. It's so easy, Liverpool style. Sammy Lee forward, and Craig Johnston up against Glenn Roder, gets round the back and puts in a simple chance for Ian Rush to score his 23rd goal of the season. Interception by Saunders, Nickel again, a good ball to Rush! Oh, he hits them from anywhere. Well, Liverpool still winning 2-0 on the highlights, nothing Newcastle can do about that. But now it's time for our special Goal of the Month competition, covering goals scored on BBC television in November and December. And the sender of the first postcard with the winning order to coincide with that of our panel will the BB be the BBC's guest at uh, Wembley at the Cup Final in May. We start with goal A scored by Jan Berger for Sparta Prague at Watford. Sparta Prague breaking forward here very quickly. This is Jabanets, the captain, to number six, Jan Berger. Looking up as the defender backs off and hits one. And oh, yes, a goal from the Czechs that has stunned the Watford crowd. Goal B scored by Kenny Dalglish for Liverpool at Ipswich. Dalglish. He's got it! That's the goal that Kenny Dalglish wanted. Goal C was scored by Danny Craney for Wolves at West Bromwich Albion. Yeah. Martinburg has gone to the left. Danny Craney in possession. Wolves getting more players forward. Craney's made the opening and scores an absolute beauty. Goal D scored by Jim Tolmey for Manchester City at Chelsea. And Tolmey tried one. Oh, I say that's some goal by Jim Tolmey. Goal E scored by Alan Brazil for Tottenham Hotspur at Manchester United. Here's Hoddle. And now Dick. And Hoddle. O'Reilly's forward again with a header. Brazil's in there. Oh, that's a fine goal, Alan Brazil. A superb individual effort. Goal F scored by Steve McMahon for Aston Villa against Queen's Park Rangers. Mortimer, DC. And McMahon. And he's put that one in beautifully. 
That's a brilliant goal by Steve McMahon. Here's a check on those goals. Goal A, Jan Berger. Goal B, Kenny Dalglish. Goal C, Danny Craney. Goal D, Jim Tolmey. Goal E, Alan Brazil. Goal F, Steve McMahon. And here's how to enter. You put your name and address on the left-hand side of a postcard, please, and your goal selections in one, two, three order on the right-hand side. And address the postcard to Goal of the Month, BBC Television, London, W12 8QT. That's Goal of the Month, BBC Television, London, W12 8QT. And good luck to you with your entries. Now, tonight's match is one of 32 third-round FA Cup ties played this weekend. And with news of the other ties, here's Bob Wilson. Yes, 30 of the remaining 31 ties take place tomorrow afternoon. Remember, Notts County and Bristol City play on Sunday. Now, traditionally, the third round produces the biggest upsets, and even the cup holders, Manchester United, can't be overconfident at third division Bournemouth, where they were held to a two-all draw in the Milk Cup last season. Eight of the men who won the FA Cup for United are in the side, and most significantly, skipper Brian Robson returns after missing four matches through injury. United, however, will be without Gordon McQueen and Republic of Ireland defender Kevin Moran, and that means a reshuffle, with Mike Duxbury switching to the centre of the defence, Remy Moses taking over at right-back, and untried teenager Graham Hogg making his debut, that's alongside Duxbury. The good news for Bournemouth, Roger Brown, recently signed from Fulham, has passed a fitness test, leaving manager Harry Redknapp optimistic about the outcome. Harry said this evening, we have a great chance. I have a funny feeling we could win. Well, no doubt many First Division managers will feel the pressure tonight, none more so than Arsenal's caretaker boss, Don Howe, whose team go to Middlesbrough for the second year running. Don confirmed to me today that despite five games without defeat since he took over, there's been no indication from Arsenal that he would get the job. But he'll no doubt be relieved that tomorrow's result, win, lose or draw, will have no bearing on his future as far as the Arsenal directors are concerned. Another manager under pressure, Tottenham's Keith Birkinshaw, faced by a tricky match at Fulham and trying to stop a slide which has brought only one win in eight games, has dropped both fullbacks Danny Thomas and Chris Hewton. Birkinshaw's not giving much away, but definitely back in the side, Graham Roberts after suspension, and Alan Brazil, who replaces Steve Archibald, ruled out by a kidney complaint. Spurs, in fact, have five first-team injuries, but that's nothing compared to opponents Fulham, who have seven missing. Well, as I've already said, there will be a few managers resting uneasily tonight, and if you're looking for other possible upsets, what about Manchester City at Blackpool, Queen's Park Rangers away to Huddersfield, West Bromwich at Rotherham, and Birmingham at Sheffield United, not forgetting the two surviving non-league sides who both have a realistic chance of success, Maidstone United at Darlington and Telford at Rochdale. If Telford pull it off, what a 45th birthday present for manager Stan Stoughton. Right, now back to Anfield. Thank you, Bob. Plenty of excitement coming up tomorrow and plenty of excitement still left here tonight. The teams are out on the field for the second half. Let's join match commentator John Moss. Just thinking, looking at the cop there and the Liverpool supporters around the ground, that in spite of their towering success in the League Championship, the European Cup and the Milk Cup, the FA Cup hasn't been a very lucky competition for Liverpool. They won it twice in 1965 and 1974 both under Bill Shankly, and it was the one trophy that Bob Paisley never managed to get his hands on in those nine highly successful years that he was in charge. It'd be an irony if Joe Fagan won it in his first season, but uh, there's a long way to go in this match yet. It's 2-0, and Sooners has the ball. Liverpool now attacking the cop end, and Newcastle attacking the Anfield Road end where their fans are. Rush Johnston Here's Lee It's Beardsley
Newcastle's great years in the FA Cup were in the 50s when they won it three times in five years. forward Saunders with the header this is Johnston and now McDermott up to Waddle Lawrenson though has not put a foot wrong tonight first half Liverpool had 11 attempts on goal Newcastle only five all in the first 20 minutes actually Liverpool had six corners to Newcastle's two so for Kenny Dalglish who I think is watching this match in hospital the signs are good for his side They're so workmanlike that although they may have lost a star player, in a sense at Anfield there are no stars. The team carries on in very much the same way. Hansen, still those Newcastle supporters booming out. Here's Neil. Robinson. Rush with the chip of beauty. Robinson's offside. Ian Rush supplying a nice touch of skill. Just as the Bladen Races was being sung at the other end. And Liverpool manager Joe Fagan has reason to be satisfied with the way his team have played up to now. Chairman John Smith on his right. Wharton. Waddle. Keegan. Keegan or McDermott work the oracle in the second half? That's the question from a Newcastle point of view. Because unless Liverpool are very charitable, he's got a man-sized tusk on here to turn this one round. too many attacking positions it's been too much work to do deeper that's Anderson Rhoda there goes Beardsley Creary. Nice turn by him. Now it could be on for Beardsley to get McDermott away. Anderson is backing up. But Liverpool are winning some useful tackles. That was a foul. They have been biting in with a lot of determination tonight, Liverpool. I think they like more than a challenge. Anderson. Can he get his crossing? And he's forced a corner. Taken quickly. Waddle. Alan Kennedy, a good tackle. And a useful pass to Ian Rush. 
Liverpool comes spreading out now. Sunes, that's the ball he likes to play. It's cut the defenders out of the game. Lee. And can he rush finish it? Well, it looked like number three at first. Ian Rush into the side netting. Coming in at 100 miles an hour. The ball that you saw played there was by Sunes. That was a classic pass. Sammy Lee, was he trying to cross it? I think perhaps he was. And Rush came in and hit the side netting. But what a ball by Graham Sunes. To Sammy Lee. by Ryan and here's Lee Sunis has got space to crack one just within the goalkeeper's reach Ryan Walk. Dermott made his run at the right time. Keegan's just inside, but Kennedy is having quite a night. He broke that attack up beautifully on the wrong flank for him, and here's Robinson. Looking for support, it's coming from Steve Nicholl from midfield. Wide of him is Rush. Robinson, Nicholl comes in again, Rush. And Anderson finds Waddle as the momentum of the game is increased. Keegan, McDermott and Wharton making runs, Wharton is onside, but he caught Phil Neal there, Kenny Wharton, after Neal had cleared the ball, it's a very calm referee Keith Hackett Jimmy isn't he? He is one of the best referees really in the football league and uh, in a cup tie like this, I was talking to him beforehand and said, was he nervous? He said, not at all, really. I can't understand you television chaps getting excited before a match. Uh, but he's a first-class referee. Phil Neal's on the floor down in the right-hand corner there, although Newcastle are attacking at the moment. I think he's been hit by something from the line. I think that's right, Jimmy. Ronnie Moran's gone to attend to him. It's Beardsley on the ball, though. Let's stay with the play. And a chance for Waddle on the far side for Newcastle. Great save, Grobelar. Bill Neal has been hit on the head. What by? It's hard to say from here, but certainly it appears something may have been thrown, but the play is swinging from end to end. Johnston for Liverpool to lead. He's back on the pitch now, is Neal. And here's Sunis. <laughs> Neil and he appears to be okay. Although he's calling to the bench even now. What a drive there by Steve Nicholl, who's having an influential match on the left hand side. But just a moment ago, Liverpool could have been in difficulties because Grobelar, who's had a quiet night, was called upon to make a very good save, which he did when Chris Waddle was well placed. I would have said that was Newcastle's best chance. Ryan Wharton and here's Saunders and it's Johnston looking for Robinson and Robinson just couldn't make it can you hear me now Fred Keegan Here's Kennedy. 
Just wonder how important that save might have been from Grobelar. If Newcastle had come back to 2-1 there, we would have been in for a very interesting 10 minutes or so. Especially with Neil here recovering from a knock. Lee. It's still nickel. He was checked. But the referee said no foul, did he? I think he may have thought it was the other way. Steve Nicol appeared to be pushing. Defended it well there. It's John Anderson who uh, sorted it out. Oh, mistake there by Sunis. And what can Keegan do here? Not much against Neil. Lee. Beardsley. Waddle waiting for a through ball. Beardsley going alone. And Hansen and Lawrenson just stopped him. It's a nice pace to the match now. And Newcastle is still very much in it in terms of play. If you have joined us in the second half, Liverpool leading 2-0. The goal scorers, Robinson and Rush. Eight minutes and 29. And Johnston, who made the second goal, was fouled there. The crowd is 33,000. Sunes. Did you hear that, Fred? Sunes. Driven across and well held. Is this one all right? Foul by Johnston. And now it's Ryan. It's quite nicely played by John Ryan and McDermott's there, intercepted by Lawrence and Liverpool could break ominously here. He's so good when he sees the space ahead of him. Two to his right, and David McCreary made a good run back, and that's a corner to Liverpool. Fifteen minutes gone in the second half, and warming up there, Ronnie Whelan. Neil. Beardsley. Good breaking by Newcastle to the left here. They're still very much in the match. Waddle. And here comes Ryan. Oh, and Grobelar makes an error which goes unpunished. Here's Jimmy Hill. Well, it's an extraordinary game at this stage because the, it's opened up in a way that you can't believe. It's almost like a sort of five-a-side match that most clubs have just before lunch. There's no tactics left in it. They're just uh, playing it like a cup tie, finding space where they can and uh, leaving opponents unmarked at times with lots of space. Most unusual these days, it's a cup tie rather than a league match. And... Uh, most enjoyable in its present form. Yes, the 
crowd would go along with that, I think. It's 2-0 to Liverpool still, but Newcastle making the sort of fight of it you might expect until Beardsley was flagged offside. Great compliment to the Newcastle fans that they've made up about one-third of tonight's attendance. Johnston Neil This is Lee and It's Johnston Oh and he's done well here is Craig Johnston What a good finish And he's had quite a night Liverpool supporters celebrate goal number three Craig Johnston round Kenny Wharton. The keeper came off the post and it went through his legs. So, 63 minutes gone. And Johnston, once more, comes in from the right and causes havoc in that Newcastle defence. Held his man off so well and found the gap. And Liverpool now are in top gear. Rush. Interception there was by Ryan. But one has to say that Keegan and McDermott at the moment are anonymous figures. They're doing their best to stem the tide, but just at this time of the night, the cop signals the fact that it's no contest. Can Newcastle do something about it? They had a good ten minutes, but all that's been wiped out by Johnston's goal. Rush back again to Johnston. And Keegan having to play left back now, that's always a sign that Newcastle are having difficulties. And he's been fouled by Johnston. And there's no sentiment here, but Keegan's taking it in good part. Newcastle are going to make a substitution. Kenny Wharton is coming off, and in his place, Neil MacDonald, the 18-year-old England youth international. Famous name, MacDonald, on Tyneside. This lad plays midfield normally. So it's a straight switch, it would seem in the Newcastle middle three. Here's Ryan. Oh, good ball, and rushes on his way, and so is Robinson. Driven a little bit wide, perhaps, allowing Saunders to make a clumsy challenge, which will give Liverpool a free kick. Words exchanged. Sunis to Neil. This is Lee. Sunis. And now it's Hansen. And Sunis again, just picking his man out, rushes over on the far side. Here's Nickel and Keegan. Lovely turn on the line by Waddle. They've shown some decent touches in their approach play, Newcastle, but they've only made one outstanding chance, and that came when the score was 2-0, and Waddle had, it, had his shot saved by Grobelar. Could have been a turning point. Here's Waddle again. Keegan. McDermott. A 
header out was by Hansen. And Rhoda cutting off Robinson. Roder again. McDermott's made a good run here. Waddle tried to dummy the defender. Hansen was just too good. But Craig Johnston, a candidate I would imagine for man of the match at the moment. Here's Lee. Soonest. Nickel having a useful game also for Liverpool. Here's Neil Johnston. Well played. Kennedy up from left back. Three waiting in the centre, but his control let him down. 3-0 was the score by which Liverpool eclipsed Newcastle in the 74 final. And 3-0 is the score at the moment tonight. This time, Keegan is on the receiving end. McCreary. Beardsley, offside. Robolas had to pick up an object from his penalty area, which... Uh, is lying on the pitch. Meantime, Waddle is brought down by Hansen. Robolar has done the tidying up, but maybe that something was thrown. And he's uh, hopping his penalty area up there as Newcastle prepare from this free kick to build up their attack. McDermott. That was a foul. Uh, Alan Hansen being drawn into one or two rash challenges just here. That was on Beardsley. Now, can Newcastle get a goal back here? Keegan took it. Lawrence and cleared. Only as far as the Far side for a throw. Beardsley. Forward by Sooners, it's a fine ball. Robinson is the player chasing for Liverpool. Saunders the defender. Play on, says Keith Hackett. Following up and having a good view of play. Keegan against Lawrenson. Nice little touch inside. Can Beardsley get there? a good attempt that was the most influential flick that we've seen from Keegan really set Beardsley up Ryan So often happens when a match is built up around two players as it was when the draw was first made that it's somebody else who makes his name on the night no Dalgleish Keegan quiet but Craig Johnston a central figure for Liverpool scored one made one and very busy so good Liverpool are at killing the pace of a match when it suits them. The third goal seems to have just taken them beyond Newcastle's reach. 
there's no team harder to play against when they're in command like this than Liverpool. Neil. Lee Johnston. Here's Lee again. Robinson. Sunes. Oh, he did well there, did Sunes. The shot actually hit Johnston. Here's Nickel. Alan Kennedy in a good position. An even better one now. Away by Rhoda. Alan Kennedy, who was a Newcastle player. And his old club tonight. Finding life. Very turbulent indeed at Anfield. The passes are going astray now, even from the likes of McDermott. Sunes inside to rush. And back by Rhoda. And McDermott now forward for Keegan, who's playing centre-forward for the time being, but... In all honesty, the high ball forward has not been a good ploy for Newcastle because Lawrenson and Hansen have dealt with it pretty adequately. The majority fans have changed their chant. Lee. They're saying give us a goal, but the danger is from their point of view, it might come at the other end again. Here's Lee. Neil. Soon as not quite there. McDonald, the substitute. To Keegan, who never stops ferreting. Waddle, the player on the far side. There's chances here. They've got two in the centre. And Waddle still gone all the way. Shot was blocked by Nickel. Came loose to Ryan. And it's still Waddle, but this time no power. Newcastle aren't finished. Not when Keegan's around. He got them moving there. Neil. Off the back of Ian Rush, but Johnston picking it up again. Doing everything right. Shot was blocked by McCreary. It rebounds again to Johnston. And Keegan gets back now to win the ball. Waddle. Referee's already awarded Liverpool the free kick. He'll have learned something tonight, Chris Waddle John, playing against the best that there is on their own ground. It's even if Newcastle do go out of the cup, as looks likely, it needn't be a wasted journey for them because I'm sure Arthur Cox has used it as a measuring stick. He can see which of his players have what it takes to go into the first division and stay there. Rather interesting, Rush on the ball again now for Liverpool. Here's Rush, Nickel is to his left, and this is Steve Nickel, only just wide. Well, the danger of Liverpool, one of the good things when they're on top is that you are able to see their ability, and they are getting rather more space than they normally do. A man wide on the outside there, Nickel. Well placed shot, or almost well placed. Just tucked far past the far post. But I was saying that uh, Newcastle's main target this year is to get in the first division. And it is rather apparent as they break away here that some measure up to it and others don't. Uh, really, physically, they don't measure up to the first division strength. And in athletic power, as much as football skills, I, I think there I see the difference between the two teams. It's amazing, it isn't just a matter of ability, it's strength and pace and winning the tussles that have made the difference between the two teams tonight. And it's McDonald for Newcastle to McCreary. Certainly was noticeable right from the start just how firm Liverpool's tackling was. A hardened resolve about this fixture from their point of view. It was built up as a possible shot result. And Liverpool don't like that sort of threat. Anderson, McDermott, Waddle. 
Keegan still influential with the header. But no end product for him yet. Or indeed for those Geordie supporters who would dearly love to see a goal at least at that end. Beardsley, McDermott, Waddle. Just like to take them on. Little flick back. But Beardsley couldn't get by Nickel. And as Liverpool break, if the ball's played back into midfield, Newcastle are going to have to hurry and find their defensive positions. It's Robinson. Who gets fouled? McCreary protests, but a free kick's been given. Graham Souness at this time of the match prefers to try a shot or will they play it shorter? It was Souness, Thomas beat it out and finally it's a corner off Rhoda. Souness really struck it well. Johnston. He certainly means to hold on to his place in this Liverpool side at the moment. There was talk of transfer, but when you're playing for Liverpool and have scored a goal and made one, and in nearly every movement, who thinks about transfers then? It the, must be the greatest feeling in the world to feel part of a Liverpool team who can take on any team in the world and feel they've got a chance of winning. Well, Liverpool's record this season bears that out, Jimmy. They've played 33 matches before tonight in the various competitions, the four competitions they're chasing, and they've only lost three of those. Here's Waddle. And Ryan tries to get round the back of Phil Neal and almost succeeded. Bobble on the pitch deceived Souness. Here's Waddle. And it's still Chris Waddle. Roder up with the attack. It's a reasonable cross, and McDonald is there with the header. Well, the supporters appreciated that. They're good humoured in the main. Making it a colourful evening at Anfield, but it's the red shirts of Liverpool coming out on top. On by Robinson for Rush. So, ten minutes to go in this FA Cup third round tie. It's Liverpool 3, Newcastle United 0. To join the match late, Robinson, Rush and Johnston the scorers, and here's Lee. Robinson in eight minutes, Rush in 29, and Johnston in 63. He... McDermott. Beardsley trying to stay on side. And Newcastle now seeking a consolation. fans singing we'll be back again next year meaning that their team can still go on and win promotion to the first division but here's Graham Souness for Liverpool to Robinson Lee Neil Liverpool playing the possession game now Hansen Johnston Lee's got Souness just inside him Neil has drifted forward. And they still sing the Bladen races.
wonderful support for Newcastle United, even in apparent defeat. Waddle. And Keegan is onside, but Lawrenson is in control. And that might just sum up the match. They've shut the danger out at source. Lee. Sunis. Lee again. Nicely played. Rush stretching, couldn't get to it. McDonald found Beardsley. Waddles away on the right. And he's onside. And Ryan has come from left back to join them in the centre. And it's still Waddle. And one thing you've got to say about him, he's not afraid to shoot. Most of Newcastle's goal attempts have come from Chris Waddle. Drifting inside on that left foot, which he favours. Too high this time. again this time Hansen is the defender who seemed to hold him off linesman was better placed than I was and said no not much going Newcastle's way there here's Johnston soon as chasing but it's out So with six minutes left, here's Rush for Liverpool. Beautifully taken down. Oh, he can still do it. Ian Rush and Sunes off the line. Glenn Roder, I believe. Glenn Roder off the line from Graham Sunes. When number four seemed a certainty. Neil, good flick. Liverpool's 23rd goal attempt of the match. To Newcastle's 11. Johnston. Nickel. Rush. Good covering there by Rhoda behind the keeper. Nickel. Oh, mistake. Johnston shot. Mistake was by Ryan. And it nearly went in off Wes Saunders. What are they doing there? Newcastle tired now and making errors which there were unforced. It's a corner to Liverpool, who lead 3-0 and are comprehensive winners, it would seem, of this cup tie. The short corner is taken. Sunis. Johnston. Oh, and Robinson's in there, and Rush is in there. And in goes number four. Newcastle taken apart now. And Liverpool finish off in style. Craig Johnston once again the instigator. He turned inside McDonald and crossed. Robinson's there, but Ian Rush presumably will claim that, although it appeared to go in off the defender at the end. Just see it again from here. Johnston turns his man and gets the ball into the centre. Thomas fumbled it. It's loose. Yes, Rush's touch. John Anderson got a late deflection, but Rush will claim his second of the night. What off for Newcastle? McDermott. Neil missed it. Is there a chance here for Ryan? And that's Ryan trying to bend one over Grobelar. 
Well, 4 0 the score, 2 for Rush, 1 for Robinson, 1 for Johnston, but he's made two others. Ian Rush, 24 goals this season, but the Newcastle supporters still determined to have the last word on the terraces. They've kept the ball. Robbel are entitled to look back with some satisfaction on the one important save he had to make. when those Geordie fans thought that Waddle was going to get the score back to 2-1. Rush is there again. Oh, tried to chip the keeper. Delightful attempt. But uh, Thomas well-placed to deny Rush his hat-trick. He's a goal machine, there's no doubt about that. Here's McDermott. Waddle. Two minutes left. Waddle. Newcastle gallant to the last. Their supporters loyal to the last, but the cup match has drifted well away from them. Liverpool remorseless. They forced a corner though, Newcastle. McDermott, Beardsley. Newcastle throw. Here's Waddle. Beardsley making the long way round. David McCreary. Phil Neal. Into the last minute. Newcastle trail 4 0. Waddle to take the corner for them. And Keegan. Good ball by Lee, but West Saunders just able to get back. Playing time now, added on for stoppages. Newcastle's spine broken now by a Liverpool team who got in front early and never let it go. Kevin Keegan's return ends in defeat, and comprehensive defeat at that. Ian Rush scores two more goals as Liverpool win in style. Craig Johnston scored one and made two, and had a very effective all-round game. The Newcastle fans deserve to be mentioned at the last because they kept up their backing all the way through and may yet still steer their club into the first division. That's another story. But for now, it's Liverpool who go emphatically through to the FA Cup fourth round. No great surprise for their loyalists, but Terry McDermott leaves the pitch disappointed as the players come off and the score tells its own story. Liverpool 4, Newcastle United 0. And it started with the Bladen races and ended with you'll never walk alone, Bob. Inevitable, perhaps. Yes, I think so. Liverpool were just too good for them. Uh, the tremendous team, Liverpool, really. You know, they're so aggressive. They're always positive going forward. There's so many players always available. They keep possession quite easily, and they just are patient, build up, progress, edge of the box. They're finishing second to none. You know, I mean, 
It was a tremendous performance because Newcastle really competed hard in the first half but never really could match them for the pace. Wonderful performance by Liverpool and, and without Kenny Dalglish looked as though that they could do still well. Still well that's it, wonderful for Liverpool, unhappy really for you as a Geordie. But let's have a look back now, we had four goals to enjoy in the match and let's see them coming up now. And Nickel with the flick, rushes in there, Robinson! <laughs> Liverpool take the lead. And Michael Robinson is the scorer. An incessant barrage of noise from the Newcastle fans. Away to our left. Here's Walton. Can the team respond? That's the big question. But responding for Liverpool is Johnston. Trying to get round his man. He did. And Rush. 2-0. It's so easy. Liverpool style. Johnston. Neil. This is Lee, and it's Johnston. Oh, he's done well here is Craig Johnston. What a good finish. Johnston. Oh, and Robinson's in there, and Rush is in there, and in goes number four. A familiar message from Anfield, Liverpool invincible through to the fourth round of the FA Cup. We'll see you tomorrow night. There's a bonus cup tie on at 11.35. Hope there's as much excitement then. Good night now from Anfield. <laughs>